Hello, Mr. Simpson here with Chapter 5, Section 2, Hybrid Atomic Orbitals. Uh, you have the learning objectives listed here for you. Please take a moment to jot them down. Okay, in the last section, we talked about uh, valence bond theory and uh, the more traditional understanding of uh, how uh, bonds are shared in covalent bonds. Um, we talked a little bit about the areas in which that theory uh, runs out and doesn't quite account for what we understand to be the case in uh, covalent bonds and in particular the uh, molecular geometry and shapes of molecules. So that's where we come to hybrid orbitals. So a couple things here before we get started. Um, keep in mind when working with hybrid orbitals that uh, the number of hybrid orbitals uh, formed always equals the number of atomic orbitals that were combined. So when I, just to make the distinction here, when we refer to atomic orbitals, we're talking about the 1s and the 2s and the 2p that we utilized when we did electron configuration. Okay, I always like to use the example of the distinction between carbon and its Lewis structure and its electron configuration as we know it. So here is carbon's Lewis structure, and you can see four single electrons, four uh, un unpaired electrons. And we understand that in covalent bonding to mean that uh, in those places that carbon can form a bond. If we think about carbon's orbital diagram for its valence electrons, its four valence electrons that we see there, it actually looks like this. And so we have a conflict here where in the valence electron, uh, the valence electrons for the carbon in the Lewis dot structure show four single electrons, but in the Lewis structure, we get a pair of electrons in the 2s atomic orbital, and then two single electrons in two of the 2p orbitals. So that's where hybrid orbitals come in. So instead of the distinction between 2s uh, orbitals being separate from the three 2p orbitals, those um, four orbitals are going to uh, hybridize. <clears throat> so here's an example. I'm going to start at the beginning with the uh, smallest amount and work our way up. So the, the first type of hybridization is SP hybridization. Okay, SP hybridization right here. All right, so this is a combination of 1S and 1P uh, orbital. All right, so the same example here applies to um, uh, beryllium in that when I think of its two valence electrons and look at its electron configuration, we get this situation happening. Uh, but we know that uh, those two electrons need to be single electrons to form two bonds. Okay, so that's where the hybridization occurs. And so what happens is this 1s orbital and the 1p orbital out of those three hybridize and form two sp hybridized orbitals. Okay, let's think about what this looks like as far as uh, shapes go. So what's happening here, again, is our 1s orbital, which looks like this, and uh, one of the p orbitals that looks like this, remember we have, um, that's one p orbital uh, on the x-axis. We would also have one on the y and the z for the three orbitals, but those two nodes represent one p orbital. Are gonna hybridize to form these two hybrid orbitals that you see uh, right here. Now, what happens is, um, one side of the hybrid orbital is much larger than the other. Uh, and that's where um, that really turns into, if you look at, at uh, these two hybrid orbitals uh, and you put them together, you would get 
that hybridization that looks like this. So that large node on each side is where you're likely to find that uh, pair of electrons that's being shared. Okay, <clears throat> moving up, sp2 hybridization. Again, this is pretty straightforward. Um, I have an s, okay, and I have I have an s and I have two p's. So that's a total of three atomic orbitals, 1s and 2p, so that means I make uh, three hybrid orbitals. And those orbitals are all going to be referred to as sp2 hybridized orbitals. Okay. Uh, an example here is the boron atom. So as we start to think about, as I mentioned in the last section, <clears throat> this is where this helps to explain situations in which we have less than a filled octet or situations where we have an expanded octet, okay? So in the case of boron here, we have its uh, three valence electrons in the electron configuration here for a single isolated boron atom, okay? Uh, if I take, if I basically figure out how to spread those three electrons out, so I have one electron in each type of orbital, you see I'm going to have 1s and 2p's in order to fill three electrons. And there are those um, sp2 hybridized orbitals. Now, uh, one thing to point out here is we still have an unhybridized orbital left, right, that just sits there. That's that 2p unhybridized orbital that was not uh, part of the hybrid hybridization here. Okay, so here is our 1s, and then our 2p's. You see we have it on the x and the y. Okay, that turns into three hybrid orbitals, and if you see what that looks like when we put them together, the large nodes together, that's where we get that 120-degree bond angle uh, for that molecular geometry. What does that look like in a Lewis structure for a molecule? Okay, so you can see here, if I were to look at the nitrogen atom here, um, and I wanted to determine the hybridization on that nitrogen atom, it really becomes about uh, bond uh, electron regions around the atom. So identifying the amount of the, the number of electron regions. So as I see here, I have one, two, three electron regions around the a nucleus of the atom. So that means I need three hybrid orbitals. So that is then sp2 hybridization. Again, another way to get three would be uh, this instead of a lone pair. I've got a double bond here, single bond, single bond. I have three electron domains around the central atom. Again, for three, that means three hybrid orbitals. So I'm looking at sp2 hybridization again. Okay, and finally for each of these carbons, you see the same situation occurring, so they're both sp2 hybridized. Next is sp3 hybridization, 1s orbital, 3p orbitals. This is the example of the carbon that I started with. Okay, so I get four hybridized sp3 hybrid orbitals okay and you can see something like this in c2h6 what would happen here is you can see we have our uh, carbon uh, our carbon atoms in the center here and here okay around that central atom i've got three hydrogens and then a bonded region or an electron region to bond the other uh, carbon together as I think of what this structural formula looks like. Okay, and so those two come together. Both carbons in this case are sp3 hybridized, and they would come together and form uh, this molecule here. Next up is sp3 dehybridization. When we think about, when we introduce the idea of having expanded octets. Well, how in the world is that going to happen? Um, it's going to happen because of this hybridization, okay? 
Uh, we have to go beyond the S and the P subshells because we're going to, in order to have expand octet, we're going to need more than eight. So we're going to have to bring in some electrons from the D subshell. So that's why we get this SPD, SP3D hybridization. Okay, so this would be for, um, this would be for five electron domains. Okay, um, you would have SP3D hybridization. And you can see some examples of what that would look like here. Uh, in the SF4, you would have a lone pair and four bonds, but in the CLF3, you'd have three bonds and two lone pairs. Um, and then you have the polyatomic ion there as well. Okay, uh, last one, SP3D2. This is the six hybridized orbitals, okay? Um, this is that octahedral shape, if you remember from your uh, molecular geometries. It's 1s, 3ps, and 2d orbitals is what gives us uh, those six hybridized orbitals. So <clears throat> our task here is going to be, can we identify the hybridization of atoms in uh, more complex organic structures like the ones you see here? So let's start with this one first. And we just need to be able to identify the hybridization that each atom in the chain here is experiencing. Experiencing. So, if I were to look at the the night the first nitrogen on the left, I've got four domains, so three pairs and one lone pair. So that tells me that I have sp three hybridization. Sorry, let me change my color. SP3 hybridization on the nitrogen. Uh, this carbon here in the middle has three domains, so three hybrid orbitals would be SP2. This nitrogen here would be SP3. And so that's really how that works. We're trying to identify the amounts of um, electron regions, electron domains around uh, any particular atom, and then determine that that what the hybridization would be based on how many bonds needed to be formed. Okay. Uh, in this structure, this carbon would be sp3 at four bonds. This carbon would be sp2, three uh, uh, electron regions. Uh, this oxygen would be sp3, two bonds and two lone pairs. Uh, so four hybrid orbitals. Uh, so uh, that's how we would apply this notion of hybridization to be able to identify the hybridization in atoms in more complex organic molecules like the ones you've seen here.